we, I think we can understand. Hello? Hello? Oh, we lost, we lost Deke. We lost, uh, all right. Wow. What, what happened? Okay. I don't know. I've got I've got calls coming in and uh, windows open here. I'm going to close the single window with Glenn. Glenn? Yeah. Okay. And uh, that's a still on conference. Ah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I got you guys both up. Uh, we were you were talking about uh, how words have magic. Hello. Words words do have power. Are you there, Glenn? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Uh, but I don't dwell on the magical nature of life in in public. I present a cold, hard uh, proposition to people. It's plain to see that we are being oppressed. It's plain to see that we are slaves. There's no sleight of hand or trickery involved. We are landless peasant fucks. Mm -hmm. That's right. what we are. It, it, exactly. The, it, the slaves are... You know, one of the slaves, as, as illustrated by We Are Change LA, the video, jumps out of the audience and actually chokes out one of the citizen journalists who came to confront this four-star general. Well, the same thing is happening here on a, a microscopic level, I mean a macro, microcosmic level uh, mm -hmm. with our blog. I'm getting attacked for discussing the occult nature of our uh, enslavement and the orthodox fundamentalist truthers are saying, no, no, that's too mystical, don't talk about that, that makes us look bad. You know, I guess, I, I really guess all these other uh, people who are covering this are also bad. I guess there's no symbolism uh, on the back of the dollar, I guess, none of that exists. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you, you sound like you're on a similar path to Freeman, Freeman TV. I don't know if you know his stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. He, he uh, speaks about the symbolism and the occult uh, at length, frequently, uh, in relation to the wild powers and, you know, what they're up to. I mean, the reason I talk so much about the Simpsons 9-11 thing is not just because visually it's so important, because they created the nine with the two towers, that meme. They created that. It wasn't, you uh -huh. know, InfoWars or whoever that came up with those Investigate 911 shirts. The Simpsons yeah. in 1997 came out with the mantra that we now all associate with the disaster of the World Trade Center. And so that dovetails with the fact that they have this overarching agenda using 9-11 as a tool, as you were saying earlier, and that there's another example of media foreshadowing the exact same network, Fox Network, five mm -hmm. months before the attack happened in real life, they actually had the X-Files spinoff where they said this is to start a new Cold War because the Cold War is over, so we need to ramp up arms sales by flying a jumbo jet into a tall building in the middle of mm -hmm. New York, and yeah. this is going to cause an international war on terror that could never be won. And so that's why I talk about it, is because it gives people the overarching, bigger picture behind 9-11, and it doesn't stop with controlled demolition. And so everybody already knows about that aspect of it, so I get attacked for trying to widen the horizon. What could we, if we were able to tune into our collective unconscious just now, what can we see around the corner then? Or what, what might we be well, that's seeing? That's exactly what I try to do over at the blog, is try to give people the latest breakdown of the current events that are going on in an Im image-based, visual, uh, symbolic way, so people can automatically process the information without having to read a thousand-page, I mean, a thousand-word article. Mm -hmm. So what do, you, what do you personally think, though, that we can... See, when I see a program like Lost, you may be familiar with the program Lost, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't. I don't watch it. A little there, bit. <laughs> there are. Uh, there's a, a range of American programs that seem to be presenting a future where things are broken, and people are living around fires. But they're still they're still dressed like uh, the shops are open, but they're in some kind of broken society. And uh, it seems to me that we're we're being prepared for a broken society in the future where uh, there are people, you know, towing their BMWs with donkeys. 
kind of thing. A bit well, Mad Max. Well, I mean, they do it. They do it in Kazakhstan. If you've seen uh, that Borat, Borat, Bar Borat. Borat, yeah, Borat. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Barack, the Barack. <laughs> Uh, that, uh, you know, the guy's driving, uh, yeah, a, a BMW with, um, with a donkey. Yeah, I think that's what I was thinking of. But it seems I, to me that that is what we're being prepared for. I just thought it was kind of cool, though. Well, see, we're doing it right now. We're, we're talking about references uh, in the mainstream uh, accepted consensus reality, and that's what I think we have to learn how to do more is see with the eyes of children again and stop being so over analytical and so basically to reiterate the earlier point I'm getting attacked for trying to simplify the analysis I'm trying to give people the tools necessary to have the eyes to see the kind of messages that are in between the lines well uh, I would keep right on doing what you're doing unfortunately uh, I don't think a whole lot of people because you know I, I do speak to people around me in my life about uh, the way it is, and a lot yeah, of the that's exactly it. You said it earlier. The technique is utilization of words, harnessing the power of words, because words seem to be the binding agent, the kind of uh, programming code, if you will, of the universe. Yeah, or at least of our reality in some sense. Right. Have, you ever, have you ever read a book called Snow Crash? Never heard of it. Never heard of Snow Crash. Do a quick Google on Snow Crash because it's about exactly that subject and exactly that proposition that our, that, that our vocabulary and our language reaches down inside us and creates for us uh, a kind of uh, instantly as soon well, as you well, hear isn't that, isn't that what separates us from the animals, the fact that we can speak and they can't? The animals have no conception of what God is. They don't understand that reality is generated by sound, and therefore we are literally the creators, many creators made in the image of God, creating our own realities from the vibrational sounds that are within us, really. It's, it's the inside uh, emanating out, not the other way around. Am I right? Well, uh, I, would, uh, I would like to point out at this point that we have taught it's dolphins. What Bill Hicks said is that we generate our own reality, and it's we not do. that reality uh, somehow generates us. We, we do have a, a slight individual choice of free will. Well, I, you might be familiar with this. It's, uh, it's a bit of science. All of your senses are slower than reality. Your eyes, your ears, your, your touch, your smell, none of it's real time. There is a brief but very significant time lag. Yeah, 